All right. So as uh, I mentioned before I started the recording, we are working on secure client connection through a secure shell protocol today. And we're just going over what secure shell protocol is. It is cryptographic network protocol based on client server architecture. And it really consists of three separate protocol layers, which govern server authentication, user authentication, and a connection management during the session. It's made widely free and available through the Open SSH project in 1999, which is what's readily avail available on all of your machines as of right now. Open SSH is a suite of secure networking utilities readily integrated into Windows, Mac OS, and most Linux distributions. Connectivity for remote login uses the SSH protocol, like I mentioned, and it basically encrypts all traffic to eliminate eavesdropping, connection hijacking, and other virtual attacks. It also provides remote operations through command sets such as SSH, SCP, and SFTP. We will primarily be covering SSH and SCP today. The goals of today's exercise is to be able to use your built-in SSH command line interface to connect to a remote server with certificates and keys. You'll then be able to set up SSH configurations to associate particular keys with particular servers. And then we'll be using SCP to securely copy files to and from our remote server once your configuration is set up. And then we'll have you walk through GitHub's documentation to set up SSH authentication through their methods. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna just actually switch gears here and jump straight into the demonstration. And we are gonna start by pulling up our terminal. So let's share this. I'll ex increase my text size and let me know if it's still too small. Otherwise I will dive right in. First thing I'm gonna do is hop into my SSH folder so I could show you what I have inside of here. I basically have a few keys and a PEM, which is a certificate file. This contains the key pair that I need to hop into my EC2 cluster, which I will demonstrate right now. So in a bit, I'll be sharing with all of you another PEM file, one that you could use to hop into the cluster that I believe Chandra set up. But basically, you'll be using this along with a command to hop into an existing cluster. The cluster I have set up is located at this address. I'll, yeah, I'll select this. Or no, actually, I'm going to put this inside the Zoom chat. I can, there it is. It's the address that I'm gonna be connecting to and my username is going to be ec2-user. And I will be using the SSH command with a dash I to indicate that the identity file I wanna use will be associated with this file name. So now I pass in this file and now I pass in the user that I'll be connecting as and I'll be typing the address of where I want to connect to. And this is just very long string generated by AWS. How many of you off the bat are already familiar with SSH? All right. This is what happens when 
you SSH into a destination, you will see that your terminal slightly changes to let you know that you are now in a different environment. If I were to run some very basic um, batch to see Linux commands, you can see that I have a file here. I could run the very same operations you can uh, locally. And we can see that this file is deleted. We could also use PWD to see our working directory. And we can navigate our folders through a lot of the same commands. Any questions so far? Cool. So this is SSHing onto a different location. Let's now walk through configuration. Inside the same directory, I have what is a config file. If I were to view this config, this is what I see. Each block inside this configuration allows me to list a host that I want to connect to with some default parameters that I want to set when passing certain arguments. Uh, for example, if I want to add keys to an agent, I type that in and I, I type in yes following that. I'm also, if you notice here, giving it an identity file. And this is what you'll be doing with the GitHub exercise later on today. Down here, is where I have the certificate.pem file that I will be sharing with you from Chandra. And you will be writing something similar here where you will be passing in the address of Chandra's EC2 cluster along with your username and your identity file. With this setup, let me exit out of this. Let me actually slow down a bit. How many of you are familiar with Vim? Cool. I try to use Nano instead. <laughs> right on. Um, I have not yet used Nano. What do you prefer about Nano over Vim? It's just way more simplified. Okay. I will give Nano a shot at some point tonight just to see what it's like. Um, I used to hate Vim. It's really not so bad once you get the hang of it. It makes no difference to me. Ultimately, I don't mind learning uh, new tools, different apps, just to see different pros and cons. But yes, Vim is very similar to Nano. It's basically a very basic, simple text editor that you can run from your command line. So as you can see, I use Vim to view my config file, and I use some very simple commands to exit out. And now that I have my configuration set up. You could see this is how I'm able to, instead of connecting to this location with this full on command, I could connect with shorthand. Instead of typing out the flag and passing it the identity file, all of that is already defined for me. So now I could just type SSH and the destination that I, I wanna go to. I don't even need to type in my username anymore. And with just that, I am able to SSH into this server location. So that is the benefit of setting up your config so you don't have to run through passing in all the same params over and over and over again. So let's run through SCP real quick. As you saw, when I hopped onto this node, I was able to view a file which I deleted. We are gonna use SCP to create files and transfer them back and forth. So let's say I wanted to, well, first I'm gonna get out of here because I don't wanna be doing this inside my SSH folder. I'm going to make a temp folder because apparently I don't have a temp folder yet. I'm gonna CD into my temp folder and now I am going to make a temporary file. I'm gonna call it temp.txt and just to get some practice in for file configuration through our command line, I am gonna use Vim to open up this temp file and I am gonna type I to insert and I am going to insert some text. I now use escape to escape out of um, insert and I could now write colon W 
to write my file, the exclamation point allows me to basically force the save. And now I could quit out. In Vim, you could, just like in console, just like in your uh, command line, you could give multiple commands at once. So if I were to say from my command line, um, ls, let's just say, let's say lsa, I want to see what files I have in here. And then I want to vim straight into my temp file from there. I could use double ampersand to combine commands in a single line. Similarly, if I were to type colon here, I can write and quit at the same time so that it writes and then immediately exits me out. So now that we have our temp file, let's try transferring it onto our network location. So I'll be using the SCP command followed by the name of the file I want to transfer. And then I want to name the destination of where this file is gonna go with my username. So I'm gonna say ec2-user at, let's grab that address again. And then I'm gonna give this a location. So I believe it should just go inside of home. Maybe we'll put inside of ec2-user and then we'll give it a name. We'll call it temp.txt. Now you see this is proof that this command passed. It was able to successfully SCP secure, trans securely transfer my file. And if we were to hop onto this node, we'll be able to see that this file exists. Let me do an ls, and here's my temp file again, which I had deleted earlier. Just to make sure that it's the exact same file, let's actually go into it while we're up here. And we should see that it says, hello world. Any questions so far? Cool. Right on, let's see, what else? Let's Where see. do you um, make that config file to save oh, yeah. all that? Sure. You are going to want to make that inside of your inside of a .ssh folder in basically your user directory. So if you're to cd into your tilde location and type in ls, you might see that it doesn't exist there. But if you do an ls dash lah, you should be able to see everything inside this directory, including hidden files and hidden directories, and you could see that I have SSH as a hidden directory inside of my user folder. So if you don't already have one existing, uh, you could use this command to check if you do or not. You can basically, yes, uh, go into your home location with tilde, use the double ampersand to pass in a second command and use ls with a dash a to grep for a dot ssh. And this lets me know that I do have a dot ssh directory created. So if you don't already have one, you'll wanna create one now because you will need that for your config. And while you all are doing that, let me grab Chandra's Slack message so I could pass all of you the certificate that we're gonna be using Chandra deleted the certificate, and I'm trying to remember if I downloaded it earlier. <laughs> uh, give me one sec. I should have. I should have downloaded it. Okay, I...
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I downloaded it. I guess, um, hold on. Let me Now I just got to find the default down directory from Slack. So sorry, give me one second. I know I did download this earlier. Okay, cool. So he named it something different from what I have mine named as, but this is the file. I'm going to be sharing it to our Slack channel. So give me a thumbs up as a response once you've downloaded it, and I will delete it once everyone's got it. Because it's a security file, you want to get in the habit of not leaving these things floating around everywhere. You want to be mindful of your digital footprint, which is why Chandra deleted the file from Slack as soon as he confirmed that I downloaded it. Here's the PM file we will be using today. And thumbs up once you've got a copy locally. Okay, so how many of us are here today? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That goes into the uh, SSH folder, right? Correct. So let's switch gears. Would anyone want to volunteer sharing their screen and demonstrating to the class how they are storing this into a config? No takers. I can try. Right on. All right. Let me stop sharing. As for uh, the rest of you, I've only got three thumbs up. Were you all able to get a copy of this file? So I can remove it. Yeah, I pulled it down now. I'm trying to figure out how to get on my VM because I've got it locked down. Okay. Since we could look into that in a sec after this after this demo right here. Um, how about the rest of you all? I feel like a good chunk of the class is being very quiet. I've got it copied here. Yeah. Oh, we're we're, uh, we're kind of shy, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll break that habit over time. All right, so I had that file in my SSH folder, but don't know what's next. Okay, sure. Uh, before we move on, I just want to make sure everybody has the file so I could delete it from Slack. So let's just try to get some, some more participation here. Uh, Aaron, have you gotten your file yet? Thumbs up. Uh, Zinzin, am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Cool. Do you have yours? Um, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, you don't know how to do it? Okay. okay. So from Slack, you can actually hover over the file and you'll see. Let me actually share my screen again real quick. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to. All right. Am I sharing Slack? Which screen am I sharing? That's the wrong screen. Mm -hmm. Slack. Cool. So if you don't have the file yet, you could just hover hover over 
where I pasted it, you'll see these uh, triple dots. I keep forgetting what they're called. Um, oh, yeah, to the left of it will be four, three more icons. And on the very left is the download button. So just click that and it will download the file into a default directory. So then you could click into show and finder and it will take you to where that downloaded. Okay, I downloaded it. Thank you. Cool, perfect. All right, uh, let me just run through everyone else here. Um, I'm just gonna go straight down the Zoom list. Edwin, you said you have yours already, right? Cool. Uh, Robert, uh, Matt, Chad. Cool. Okay. I believe that's everyone. And so let me go ahead. I believe Nick already has it. And then let me delete this. Cool. Now we are good to go. Okay. Steven, go ahead and share your screen again. Cool. So before we actually go ahead and create our config files, let's try SSHing manually into this server using the certificate. So the first part of the command is going to be SSH. And then you're going to want to pass in a dash I. The, this flag stands for identity. And what you're basically passing this identity is the file name, uh, the certificate that you want to use. Next, you want the username that you'll be signing into. And let me just see if Chandra specified. Did not specify. Let's try, it might either be Ubuntu or EC2-user. I really don't know how Chandra has this uh, EC2 cluster set up. So let's try EC2 user first. I think it's Ubuntu. That's what it says in the README, right? Oh, but you said, Nick, you said that's what it is. Yeah, let's try well, it. Yeah. And uh, Nick, do you actually have the address as well? Yeah, it should be in the instructor channel. I can send it to you real quick. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So which, was it Ubuntu or? Yeah, it should be Ubuntu. Cool, thanks, Nick. All right, and then I'm going to paste the address inside of the Zoom chat. Do we uh, use that address for our config file? You will, yes. Is that the right way to enter it? Yep. So let's give that a shot. Now it's going to ask you if you would like to continue. You'll want to say yes. And now it's telling us that we have an unprotected private key file. So what's happening here is we're using a certificate that we downloaded from somebody else, but we haven't set its permissions to our user, the one that we're in our machine on. So to set it to your local machine user, you're going to use chmod 400. chmod stands for change mode. And just like that, You've set the permissions, you run the SSH command again, and now we're in. Cool. Awesome. Let's try typing an LS. Awesome. How is everybody else doing? Was everybody else able to get in?
just type in the chat if you haven't, if you're having any trouble, and we'll try to troubleshoot what's going on. Uh, you said Shamad 400? Yep. On the uh, PEM file? Yep. It said for me permission denied. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh. Was anyone else getting permission denied? What was the actual command? SSH tech I and then what else? Uh, the name of the file. And then okay. the username and the address. I'll type in the entire thing into the Zoom chat. And then I think Edwin, you spoke up first. So if you want, uh, go ahead, share your screen and we could all look at it together. And Aaron, uh, your question, to get to the SSH file, you're gonna want to first locate where it downloaded, and then you want to move it to the .ssh folder inside of your user directory. If it doesn't already exist, you're gonna have to create it. And we could walk through that together after we uh, troubleshoot Edwin's real quick. Okay, so you ran your ch mod, right, Edwin? All right. Can you type in um, ls. Okay, I see the file. Um, you have a typo. Uh, it's hard for me to see the screen, but is it SSH tech I dot, is that an M or an N? It looks like an M, the dot P. My yeah. screen's kind of, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm comparing it to the rest of the uh, command. Oh, so we can, instead of this long command, we can, can we put in the host name and the user into the config? Yes. Yes, and we will get to that in a bit. Um, I don't have any ideas off the bat as to what could be causing this. If we have already used chmod to change user permission. Oh, can you do the uh, SSH again? Oh yeah, try what Nick said. But I'm also thinking it might be how your environment is set up. So, Edwin, tell tell us a little more about your environment setup. Are you? I see that you're on Windows. So you're, are you running something inside a container or a virtual machine? You made it. Yeah, you're still muted. So uh, my setup is basically right now I'm using my command control. I typed in WSL to allow me to use Linux. Uh, I usually use my terminal, but since mm -hmm. it's like in a different network, it didn't allow access for my downloads and I didn't know how to move the file from my, from one drive to the other. So I just went to command control, and, I mean, uh, on command line to see if I'm able to do it. Um, 
that that's pretty much just my my setup right now. I'm a command line. Okay, so this is WSL, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is you might have to use chmod with a different number, but I'm not exactly sure what yet. Um, I think we can try to go back to this later on, maybe in a separate room. We'll create breakout rooms so we can troubleshoot this together. Uh, but for the time being, I think it's an environment issue. So let's move on to, uh, yeah, unless you have any more ideas, Nick. So it looks like he's on WSL, but he's accessing his Windows drive. So he needs to do this from WSL itself. It's not on a Linux file system right now. Okay. So I need to go to my uh, regular terminal. Yeah, because you shouldn't see mount slash C. You don't want to work on the Windows file system from WSL. Because because the original issue was that I wasn't able to access the download file from here. If you download to the regular Windows drive, you can copy and paste it through File Explorer from Windows Downloads folder to the WSL home folder. And then oh, you okay. should be all set. Okay, I'll try that. Well, I'll, I'll, stop, my share, I'll stop sharing my screen, but I'll try that. Okay, cool. You can also just copy the text. Um, the pen folder is just a text file. Um, oh, okay. So. That's true. Yeah, I'll try that. Right. Okay. Aaron, how are you doing? Were you able to get your file to the right location? Let me share my screen then. So, yeah. So once I start sharing, um, so, uh, what else? I'm sorry, my husband interrupted me. So I click on the file and pop out something. Um, where I was saying. Okay, so can you see my screen right now? Yep. Okay. So I did the uh, get to the SSH. And I type the same thing over here. Mm -hmm. um, I just what it says. I'm kind of confused here. Okay. So we first have to find where you downloaded your file. Okay. Do you know where it downloaded to? Oh, uh, just in download, I think. Okay. Yeah. So open up a second terminal window. Uh, yeah. You can go back to the terminal, yeah, and just do like new tab or something. Okay. Just like a tab or something? Yeah, you could create a new tab. Uh, so from the very top menu where it says shell at the top of the screen, or I, I see, you, you, you have a tab up? Um, no, I guess I have a clear. Okay, that's well. We'll just use this um, window then. So, uh, do an ls for me, okay. and let's cd into your downloads directory. Okay. Mm. Now, um, type mv for move. And let's start typing out the name of this file. So DevOps dash. And you could actually press tab to autocomplete. Um after I tap the name or yeah, after you start tapping typing anything, you could usually use tab to autocomplete the the file name. But this is what you want. You want to move that file to your dot SSH location. So type tilde. A uh, squiggly line. Like this? In the same line. Um, okay. So the MV command is the command that you're running. And DevOps. 
um, delete that and go and type MV. You can also just press up. Try pressing up two times. I'm not sure what is that a king name is off. Yeah, the up arrow. Oh, the up arrow. Gotcha. Yeah, it lets you scroll through your previous commands. So we want to go back to MV space DevOps. Uh, okay. Okay. And now press space. We want to pass in some more parameters. Now we want to tell it where we want to move it to. So we're going to start with the squiggly line, the tilde. It should be to the left of your one on the keypad. It's above tab and to the left of the number one. Oh. This one? A whole oh. so, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Now do a forward slash. Forward slash. Mm -hmm. Dot SSH. And then one more forward slash. And then the name of the file DevOps dash EW dot PM. So this command is basically moving that file to the SSH directory. Tilde is basically your home location for your user, your local user. Okay. So now you could type CD. Oh. You have to go back to that directory first. So CD to change directory mm -hmm. and type Tilde. Forward slash dot SSH because this is the directory that you moved your file into. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And now you can type an LS, just to double check that you're in the right place. Cool. Now that you have your file, you should be able to run that SSH command on it. Okay. Uh, was the amazon.com this one part of it? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's part of it. Nice. When uh, when you're done with her, I wouldn't mind uh, sharing my screen to confirm I've got it. Okay, cool. All right. So this is part of the demonstration, but basically this is showing you. Oh, Aaron, we're not done yet. Oh, sorry. <laughs> gotcha. So that message that you just saw, that's basically mm -hmm. reminding you that you need to change the permissions on the file before you okay. can access the location. So okay. because we downloaded this file from somebody else, it was... Mm -hmm essentially using that person, that original mm -hmm. account's um, user information. So you're going to use chmod. It's all one word. Uh, mod? Yeah, Maybe. this basically stands for, it's M-O-D. M-O-D. Oh, it. yeah. It's short for change mode. Gotcha. And basically used to change permissions for files. Okay. So we're going to run 400 because 400 will basically tell it to change the permissions for this current user. Is there a space between? Yes, it? just one space. And now you want to pass it in the file name that you want to change permissions for. Okay. Uh, so the DevOps one? Mm-hmm. I don't remember the folder. It was DevOps. Um, hmm. dash. Is that correct? Uh, it's P E M. Okay. Perfect. Now try running the SSH command again, and you could just type up on the D pad on the arrow pad. On the arrow keys. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. This one here, right? Yep. Perfect. See how your name changed? You are now logged in as Ubuntu at the IP address of 172.31.43. 
Uh, where do you see that? Oh, this one? Yeah, the very bottom line. Okay, gotcha. Where's your risk? So that's telling you that your username is now Ubuntu and mm -hmm. that IP address is your location. Okay. And so now you could start running commands just like ls or mm -hmm. cd to change directory. It's basically a separate environment. You have now accessed the server. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Stop sharing. All right. And I think, Matt, you wanted to go up next. Cool. And if you're saying anything, you're muted. Yeah, sorry about that. I um I lost my my unmute button. But anyway, so um managed to to pull it down, put it in the dot SSH folder, mm -hmm. did the chmod on it, and then um there we go. And then it looks like where's my SSH command? Sorry, right here. So did the SSH, did the Chamad, did the SSH again, and it looks like it worked because I'm currently, current user is at that IP. Awesome. So, awesome. Perfect. Okay, cool. I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. Is there anyone else that hasn't been able to SSH onto the cluster? Uh, I have a question. How do I go to my downloads file? Sure. Uh, do you want to share your screen? Uh, yes. Okay. You see my screen? Yep, I see it. Okay. Okay, so it looks like you might have your file structure set up a little differently from everybody else. And I see you're another Windows user. So I believe, uh, Nick, do you happen to know how she can access her downloads folder from here? She's not mounted onto her Windows um right. i'm not sure i'm not a windows user so oh um <laughs> i, would just uh, I touch think it. it might be easier yeah to just copy and paste the text okay so let's do that so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run touch touch mm -hmm. and this creates a new file and we're gonna name it devops dash ew dot pem uh, so dash space. Let's give it the same name as the PEM file that we're downloading. So D D E V O P S dash E W. Perfect. All right. Now let's use a code editor to open that up. So you could either use Vim, you could use Nano, whichever you prefer. Let's yeah. let's do it straight from the command line for practice. So you could type uh, vi space devops dash ew dot pem. And now you are inside what is called a Vim terminal. You are accessing this file that you just passed in, and you could type I to insert. I insert. Yeah, you see where it says insert at the bottom now? And you might have to move the window up. There you go. Now you're able to insert. So let's open up that PEM file inside of your folder. 
Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You'll probably have to right click to open it into a text editor. Yeah, let's open it with uh, well, Notepad. Okay, now just select everything and copy it. Right. Yeah, now you should be able to paste it. Okay. Now hit escape to escape out of insert mode. And type colon. Colon. Mm -hmm. Now you can type in a command and you're going to type in W for write. Mm -hmm. Yep. And mm -hmm. hit enter. Okay, now that your file has updated, you can close out of it. So you can type colon Q to quit. And that is good to know. I did not know that, Robert. Thanks for that. Okay, so now we want to move this file into your .ssh directory. So we just have to create your SSH directory if you don't already have it. And we're going to do that with MK. DIR and it's going to be dot SSH. And now let's move that file into that directory using MV and the file name. And then the directory dot SSH forward slash, and the file name again. Uh, space or not? No space. Enter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now let's change directory into your SSH folder. Mm -hmm. And let's run ls to see if our file is there or not. Perfect. So again, you're probably gonna want to run chmod, even though in your case, you may not need to because you've created the file locally, but let's do it anyway. So chmod 400. And then the file name. And now you could type the SSH dash I uh, with a space in between. Another space and the file name. A space and then the username and address. Username. It should be Ubuntu. My username? Um, no, it's the username is going to be Ubuntu. This is the username that was registered when this certificate file was created on the AWS cluster. This is the username that you're going to be signing in as. So I just type username? Oh, no, the username is Ubuntu. It's spelled U-B-U-N-T-U. Here, let me uh, copy it into the chat again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's it's gonna look like this. Perfect. And that second part is the address of the server that you are SSHing into. Okay. All right, let's give that a shot. So, and then I can click enter. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to type yes. yes. Okay, we got a permission denied. Mm -hmm. 
I'm wondering if this is again just so this is a WSL terminal, right? This is your instance of Linux on Windows. Yes. So why didn't it work? We might need to have an extra new line at the end of the DevOps folder or the file, the PEM file, because it's a lib crypto error. Oh. Um, since we copy and pasted it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I would open it up again. And yeah. Okay. There's, so, there's, there's a piece of it missing. Like I see. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. We need uh, to. Nice. We need that right there. There you go. Good catch. Thank you. Open again. Yeah, you could use VI to open it up with them. She's going to have to open it with sudo. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, and then do you see how it says you're changing a read only file? Oh, okay. Let's. Do you think she'll be able to force the write with um W bang? Uh, I'm not sure. Right, we could try it. I mean, if it doesn't work, then we'll just try it again. So escape out of insert mode. Type colon. Type W and exclamation point. W and then enter. Exclamation point. So give it the bang. Just like, um, mm -hmm. just like this. Oh. Okay, now exit out. So, um, colon and Q to quit. Okay, since it did write, let's try SSHing again and just use a deep the the up arrow on your keypad to pull a SSH command again. There you go. And let's try that. Nice. Nice work. Thank you. Yep. All right. I believe that's all of us now, right? Yes. Cool. So while you have your screen up, do you want to try using SCP to copy a file. Okay. Okay. So, um, first we have to create a file. So let's try, let's use, you know, let's, let's, let's create a file instead of directory. So let's try touch and let's just name it, whatever. Let's just call it hello world.txt. It's let's give it, um, let's just make it one word. Yes, please. XT. To make it a text file. TXT. Okay. okay. Hit enter and type LS. Okay. Now let's try to copy this file to your local location. So let's exit out. Okay. 
And let's try pulling that file from the server onto your local machine. And we're gonna do that with the SCP command. So type SCP. And yep, just like that. Well, we're gonna to wanna to add more to it. So SCP space. And then we're gonna type in the username that you're gonna sign into. So it's gonna be Ubuntu at the EC2 address. This one? You'll need the username first. Username. Yeah, the username is Ubuntu. My username? No, no, no. You'll want the username that you used to sign into the external server. And that username is Ubuntu, just like you typed earlier. See this uh, here? The first part of this string is Ubuntu. That's the username. The at symbol means this user is signing into this address, which is EC2-34-229, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're using the SCP command, you could pass in those same parameters SCP username at destination. Does that make sense so far? So EC2-34-229 is a username. The That's whole... the destination. Ubuntu is the username. Okay. So... Ubuntu... That's the same Yes. And then that second part is the address. So now press space. Or actually, sorry, you're going to want to um, type colon after that. And then we want the location of that file or just that file name. So let's just type hello world.txt. So this is telling it that you want to, to find this file. And now press space and type dot, uh, period. period. Uh, no, um, you'll, you'll want the period. The period basically says it's gonna be in this current working directory. Uh, period. And let's try that. So we are getting a permission denied, most likely because we don't have our config set up. So this is where you're gonna want to create a config file. So now you want to type touch and you're just gonna make a config file. It's just gonna be config, C-O-N-F-I-G. And now let's edit that config file. Which one? And, uh... Uh, you'll want to edit the config file using a text editor like Vim. So let's use VI. Hello world, Carol. VI. Hello world, Chris. No, um, you're going to want to edit the config file. I'll touch it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been going for kind of a while. Uh, should we get a break? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Go ahead. Uh, take a break. Um, we'll reconvene, let's say, in 15 minutes. And uh, Zinzin, let's try, to, let's try to work through this while they're doing that. And then I'll let you go on a break, too. Okay. Okay, so hit enter. And now you're going to want to type in something that looks like this. So we doing right now or uh, later? Um, type host. Host or post? Host with an H. 
And uh, let's make it a capital H. And then you're going to type in the address that you want to sign into. So I'm going to paste this inside the Zoom chat. It should look like this. Next, you're going to want to type user with a capital U, space, Ubuntu. Switchman. You'll, you'll want to use the username. The username is Ubuntu, U-B-N-T-U. Oh, yeah. uh, just the username this time. Now hit enter. The next line is going to be the identi identity file. So that's going to look like this. And then you want to pass in the location of your file name. So that's going to look like uh, devops-ew.pm. Just like that. You'll need to give it the file path as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that should be good. You should be able to save this. So hit escape to exit out of insert mode. That's good. Mm -hmm. And then colon W to write. And then colon Q to quit. OK, so to test to see whether that works, let's now try SSHing into that server address again. So this time, try SSH. And then just the server name this time, or sorry, the server address. Is uh, your last uh, message from chat? It's the EC2-34-229. It's everything that follows the at symbol. Okay. Perfect. So because you have a config file, you were able to use the SSH command without passing in the username because your username is defined inside the config file. Okay. Okay. Now let's, could you type PWD while you're there? PWD? Mm-hmm. This shows the current working directory. OK, great. Now let's exit out again. Excellent. And we're going to go back to trying to copy that file that you created on there onto your local directory. So let's press up on the arrow pad a few times until we could find that SCP command that you used. OK, perfect. So let's actually add in front of hello world a forward slash home. Home? Oh. Yeah, with a lowercase, just like it is a few lines above. And then forward slash Ubuntu. Um, in front of the home. So forward home forward slash Ubuntu. Uh, exactly. Now let's try hitting enter.
perfect. Now try typing ls. You see how you now have hello world in your folder? Uh -huh. Okay, because uh, yeah. um, my directory is uh, open too. So right now those text file is under my directory. Yeah, that's your server directory. Ubuntu is a server on the external location. And .ssh is a directory on your local machine. Does that make uh, sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. Great work. You okay, have successfully SSH'd and used SCP to copy a file from a server. Um, all right, okay. go ahead, take a break, and we'll all meet back up at 7.15. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.